Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and we got a few big stories for you today. The first of which deals with an upcoming Nintendo Direct, because, oh boy, it's coming. We're getting closer and closer, but we're not done there, because we need to talk about some new stuff, or some information at least swirling around the Nintendo Switch 2. Yet again, what a surprise. These are probably going to be common topics all month. And we do have an update on the upcoming DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Thanks to previews dropping in Japan. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Drop a like. We're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. And ring-a-ling that ding -a ling so you can be notified of all future uploads. This is Prime News, your 3 p.m. show. And let's get into the news. <laughs> Our first story deals with the Nintendo Direct because there were a few choice words thrown out there by known insider Nate the Hate. So let's head on over to some of those words. So the first thing that he does say is, well, guess what? The Nintendo Direct is happening soonish. I know, sort of weird to just to make a thing on this, but what we have to remember is that this month's Nintendo Direct was technically only teased by Zippo and everyone else, including myself, just sort of assumed it would happen. Even Jeff Grubb, who originally teased a September Direct over a month ago, has now sort of stated that he doesn't think we're getting a September Direct because of the Mario Wonder Direct. However, Nate clarified in a comment to someone that one has nothing to do with the other, the Mario Direct or the September Direct. In this, it makes even more sense today, given the public demos they had at Nintendo Live. They obviously wanted a Mario Wonder Direct lead-in to those public demos. So where does this leave us with all this information? Well, it just leaves us still not knowing when the Direct is happening, just that it is. So please look forward to it. That's really all we have. I know, it's not much, but it's it, it, it's just like a... A little something to keep our minds going on the next Nintendo Direct. Now next up we have some leaked details coming from Cerebi.net about, well, we call them leaked details. They come from previews in Japan for the Teal Mask DLC. So let's just dive into what those details are. It's a little convoluted as Pokemon information tends to be, but you know what, it's still new. So the first bit of information we have are that TMs are in the game. Famitsu notes that the moves Grassy Glide, Burning, Jealousy, Lash Out, and Poltergeist were seen as well as Toxic. It also confirms that more clothing, hairstyles, and picnic supplies will be available at the Katami Center. And you can even now rearrange chairs at the picnic table, and I probably butchered the name of that center, I'm sorry. In addition to the Maki, when completing the Ogre Austin minigame where you pop balloons, you can also get Terra Shards. There are three difficulties, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and you can play with other players to complete it. There was also new items, including one that increases the experience points Pokemon gain in battle when held. When your Pokemon pose for a photo, when you have the Roto Stick, you can now select which song will cause your Pokemon to react. You can also share photos among friends when connected via Union Circle. The interesting part, of course, has been the public outcry when these details came out. A lot of fans online are pleading with consumers to not purchase this DLC, simply because they still haven't delivered on the promise Nintendo made to fix the performance issues, and they don't want to continue to see this game rewarded. Reality is it sold over 20 million copies. There's probably going to be tens of millions of uh, DLCs already pre-bought, let alone going to be sold in the future. It is what it is. They did do a pretty good job with DLC on the Sword and Shield game, so this DLC could be pretty jam-packed, as could the next part of it. I don't know. I'm just throwing out there what the information is. The controversy surrounding the game will ever be present simply because it doesn't seem like they did the best job they possibly could have when making this game. Now for our last story today, just a three pack of news. We have some details, or do we call them details? We just have some scant information floating out there on Nintendo Switch 2 that I wanna make sure that we talk about because I think it's important that anytime reputable people come forward that we pay attention to how the conversation around Switch 2 is being framed. So first we have Digital Foundry. Now they did a recent direct podcast and they had some interesting Gamescom rumors come across 
across their way. They noted they didn't actually see Switch 2 there and that Nintendo had a booth in the business area of Gamescom that was quite large but heavy security at the entrance and even at the back entrance where only food was being allowed in, security double checking everything. Whatever they had back there, they did not want anyone to see. So while we know Mario Wonder was being demoed there, that could have been in a separate area. This particular area was heavy, heavy security. And we heard that they were talking to third party companies about the next Nintendo system. So chances are there could have been some details in there and Nintendo just didn't want it to get out. But they did hear a bunch of rumors and a bunch of, you know, information. However, they're not like, they're just not gonna share what they heard at this time because they want to get a bunch of verification first, which should come in due time, maybe by the end of the end of this month or so after Tokyo Game Show. Now, Nate the Hate says, in terms of raw power, uh, he said this over on Family Boards, that, you know what, it's not going to match the Xbox Series S, but when you factor in newer features like DLSS, it could match it in terms of resolution and frame rate. Basically, in all the ways the power cap may suggest that it can't. Now, we can't be sure if he's just speculating or speaking from direct knowledge. That's why we talk about this, you know, because the bottom line is he has said he knows information that he's not sharing currently. So when you think about that, you don't really know if he's basing what he says on what he knows, if this is just more of his informed speculation, or if this is like legit information he's putting out there. Hey, I know how powerful this thing is. I previously said myself it's as powerful as a PS4 Pro, which is in some ways more powerful than an Xbox Series S, but in many other ways, not as powerful as an Xbox Series S because it's using newer technology. So take that for what you will. Now, beyond all of this, Phil Spencer went to Nintendo Live and yeah, he thanked Nintendo for letting him and his family of four people play Mario Wonder together. And this just leads to a lot of interesting speculation surrounding the relationship between Nintendo and Xbox. Obviously, we know Phil Spencer is a big fan of Nintendo. He's called them a treasure. If they were ever in threat of going out of business, he would do what he can to make sure that didn't happen. And beyond all of that, we know a lot of Xbox stuff goes over to Switch. Minecraft has been a massive success on Nintendo Switch, an absolute bestseller, maybe the best-selling third-party game of all time on Nintendo Switch. And we're not even done because they also bought out Bethesda and other studios that were bringing games like Doom, Doom Eternal, and the Wolfenstein series over. And maybe this is just a sign that relationship is continuing to grow between Nintendo and Phil Spencer, which means the relationship's continuing to grow between Nintendo and Xbox. Of course, the number one speculative thing people want to talk about is the possibility of Xbox Game Pass coming to the next Nintendo system. Again, I don't know if this is a direction Nintendo Nintendo plans to take, but we've talked before how there is a possibility of an Xbox Game Pass working on Switch, but on a different tier, like a Nintendo tier, where you get all of the exclusive Xbox games through it, but maybe not some of the third party games so they can third parties can continue to sell independently on Switch. Again, this is just all pure speculation, but the thing is, if the Nintendo Switch 2 is close enough in power to be able to sort of do what the Xbox Series S can, then in theory, all the Xbox exclusives, which have to work on Series S, should be able to work natively on Nintendo Switch 2, which could open the door to the subscription service. Again, they want it on everything. The big bugaboo is that you need Xbox Live or you know you need that account system there. If Nintendo could somehow allow that account system on their platform in addition to their own, then maybe this is a possibility that we could see in the future. Again, mostly speculation. All we know is Phil Spencer went there, was seen publicly, posted publicly, and said he was playing Mario Wonder, and he had multiple passes on him. He wasn't just there as like a, oh, you know, I'm just a general consumer who bought a pass. No, no, he was a special guest invited by Nintendo. So take that for what you will. There was probably business meetings as well, because there always is. Doug Bowser and, you know, Phil Spencer were in the same building at the same time, so... You know, and Nintendo Live was an exclusive event. So take that for what you will. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Sort of a shorter Prime news today, but you know what? Not all of them are going to be long. You guys are awesome, and I'll catch you in the next video.